Hey, it's Gabriel. We help gym owners systematize client acquisition. And today in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you guys can have a complete idea because everybody makes this thing so complex. Marketing, what is it? How can I actually generate more members for my gym? On my studio, I'm going to show you exactly step by step in a, such an easy way. You guys are going to love this, how you can implement something today and that's going to get you better results with your marketing endeavors. Without further ado, I'm going to jump on my PC and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by this. So we are going to use a book that you guys, most of you guys know for sure. And this is Strength Training Anatomy by Frederick Villavier. Now why I'm using this book? Because most of you guys probably had read this book. And second of all, because I'm French, as you can see with the flag in the background, we're going to support a bit our frérou right here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to actually focus on seeing marketing and sales later down the road with an understanding of, okay, building a physique together. Big why actually? Because if you have an unbalanced physique, the whole picture won't make sense. The thing is, marketing is the same if you take a look at it, because if something is missing in the, in, like the entire thing falls apart. Like, I don't know if you see guys, for example, that just have their, their upper body dialed in, but they have legs like this, you know? Don't be this guy, and we definitely don't wanna be those guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a system that replicates this. Basically building an harmonious physique, something that is perfect at all the different places so you can have a system that's bringing clients on demand. That's really the goal of it. Now, let's build a great physique, my friends. Let's go. So we are going to take this little drawing, again from that book, that we're going to focus on each muscle, each part, and actually retach that to a marketing strategy that you guys can use and build it all together. So we're going to start with the arms. Those are gonna be the ads, why? Because this is what's gonna grab the attention of your prospect in the first place. And in the ads, you have multiple things. You have the creative, you got the headline, copy, targeting, and placement. So I'm gonna go a bit more in detail about what those means. Creative, it's gonna be your image, your video, whatever you choose and actually wanna use. Headline, it's gonna be basically the big title that you're gonna put first. Usually the name of the offer that you are running or the promotion of the month. For example, right now we are coming close to Black Friday. This is a good time to put, hey, Black Friday special, something like this. That can be a great headline. Copy. Copy, this is basically the description that you got, the text that's describing what the offer is about and exactly what, it's, what it is about exactly. Targeting. Targeting is going to be, okay, where are you targeting? Are you targeting further away from the gym, closer from the gym? What are you doing with the um, targeting only women? Are you targeting men and women? Are you targeting a specific age range? So this is a factor you can play with. And you also have placements. So placements is going to be, okay, do we only advertise on Facebook, on the feed, or do we advertise as well on Instagram or TikTok, for example? That can be another one that you can try. So this is how we take a look at ads and all the variables you have. Now I'm going to show you best practices so you can actually get your ads running and get some great results. This is how you do it with best practices. I would advise you guys use bright creatives. They tend to work better for a simple reason because most people nowadays on Instagram and Facebook, they have their phone on dark mode, meaning that the whole application is darker. It's black basically. So you have to use something that interrupts the pattern. So when they are scrolling, if it keeps staying black and you have a darker creative, it's not gonna grab the attention as much. It has to stand out. So if you use brighter creative, it tends to work better. Now also group pictures, people sweating in the class, group classes work really well as creative. If you wanna actually grab attention with a picture or a video, those work pretty well. Testimonial as well, they work pretty good as well, but they're not in, the, in this list. Usually what we like to do is we like to call out the gender and the area. For example, like, hey, women in Los Angeles, something like this. Or even if you are, for example, in Los Angeles, that's a great example actually, because the, po the, the population density is so huge. What you gotta do is that it's sometimes better if you have a huge density of population to target a smaller area. Maybe a certain part of the city, for example, that you are targeting that in all your people are coming from. The goal here is to make them feel like, oh, it's made for me. I should take a look at this. That's really the goal. Again, this goal is to make sure that we grab the attention of the people. Then the goal, also one thing that you guys can implement is using free offers, like something free, offering something free, for example, free consultation, a free 10 day free pass, something like this, because free tend to convert two times better than non-free. Meaning if you do the same ad, you have a similar offer, but just you get one that says something is offered for free and one that's not, well, you're gonna get two times more leads going through the funnel. So that's a pretty good return on investment for just changing the world. So definitely use that one. Now we're gonna go into chest, which is gonna be capture the information we have now, because we have grabbed attention 
the attention of the people with a great offer, with a great ad. But now, we really have to get a way to contact them because if not, well, we, most of them are not just going to come by themselves. We actually have to push them a bit so they can actually come into the gym. So with this, you have different variables at play, a bit less, but you have the headline, that's the most important one, the creative that you use and the lead form that you're going to be using. The lead form, for those who don't know, it's basically something that you use to capture the lead's information. They put the information in and you just collect email, phone number and name, typically. So. What are you doing in this situation? Best practices. What I would advise you guys to have is a short lead form. The fewer number of things you have to fill up, the easier it's going to be and the more traffic you're going to get. Now, keep it stupid simple, guys, because the more complicated you make it with a huge landing page, if, you are, if you're doing it on a website and you get 10 other things going on, it's all like flashy and all that. Keep it simple. Image, form next to it with the things that they need to fill up. And the less there is, as I told you, the fewer there is, the more leads you're going to get. Now, also one thing, because you got to also keep that into consideration. I actually discussed that in my previous video on how to increase lead quality. Sometimes you want a bit less volume because you want to increase quality. And that's totally fine. And there is a way to, multiple ways to do so. I actually advise you to go watch this video so you can actually have more detail about this. But here we are aiming for more volume. So in this situation, if you want to get as much volume as possible without having leads that are like that, basically having the leads with the best quality possible. What I would advise you to do is test out this thing. Maybe it won't work for you, but definitely a thing to test out is if you are losing a, a Facebook lead format, I would advise you guys to instead of having the usual email, phone number and um, names, uh, uh, name placeholders, I would advise you guys to switch it to custom values. Basically just making it the same thing, but it's not going to auto fill up. Uh, meaning that people are going to actually have to put in manually their name. You're going to end and email and phone numbers. You're going to get less volume with this. However, you're going to get better emails, better phone numbers, and people that are actually more qualified. So if that's what you want, definitely do this one. Then we're going to go into back leads to appointments. So now we want our leads to book a time to come actually to the facility so we can sell them our services. But how do we do this? The thing is, we can approach this with the same, like kind of a, the V shape of the back, if that makes sense, because we start at the top with more volume and then we lower as long as the system goes down and it keeps going, you're going to get lower volume and have to contact leads less often, if that makes sense. So what does it look like, actually? You have multiple tools here. You have texting, calling and email. Those are the main ones. But what I would advise you guys to focus on is texting, because emails... It gets responses, but not as much as the other ones. Calling is good, but the thing is, people don't really respond to calls anymore, or you can, but it's not the best. The thing is, in contrast to texting, which is definitely the best, we see, the best results we see, because texts are getting 97% view rates. So you are definitely going to get crazy results with this. And also, it's really easy to, to automate. So it's extremely good. So you can basically not spend seven hours a day actually following up on leads. That's pretty cool. So we use automated text sequences, so it can do 95% of the work for you and actually make sure that those leads schedule a time with you. We also have sometimes whenever people are actually responding to the tasks uh, with like something that requires a more, let's say, human response or particular situation to handle, what we then do is we actually handle objection or questions. So what, what I would advise you guys to have in this situation is have a bank of pre-made responses to typical questions you get or objections. That way you can handle them fast and actually handle all those leads. It won't be like, it will be just 5% of the leads that actually ask questions, but you definitely, if you do have this, those things pre-installed, it's gonna help you to get faster with this and do a bigger volume. So it's really great. And also what I would advise you, again, phone calling is optional, but if you have the occasion and the time or a team that can do this, I would advise you guys to double dial because sometimes people are in a do not disturb mode and if you are double dialing, you go through that mode, meaning that you definitely get a lot more people that way. But yeah, double dialing is great. Actually, one of the things I'm gonna share with you best practices on actually how to do so and a few things that you gotta understand, what I would advise you guys is to actually go ahead and contact them five to 10 minutes after they filled up the form. The quicker you do it, the better. So that's why having automations is great so that you can actually make sure you contact them while they are still hot because like five, 10 minutes from now, they're gonna remember they filled up a form, but I guarantee you that one hour from now, or if you reach out to them like one day later, they won't, I guarantee you this. And maybe you've actually been in that situation where you're like, oh, I'm calling those leads, but they don't actually remember 
thinning up a form, that's because you're calling them too late. So definitely have some texting, uh, some texting automations to do so and get them what they're warm so you can actually start a conversation. That's extremely important. Um, and also one quick thing about that, because we're automating this, they can, it's, easy for them, it's easier for them to actually ignore the text and we don't want, really want them to do so. So what I would advise you in your text, in your automated message is put a little sentence or something similar to the extent of what I'm going to tell you now. Put something like, hey, by the way, this is Gabriel, a real human, so you can respond and I will like, you can respond to this text and I will actually respond to you back. And that's great because when you do something like this, you actually get responses and sometimes people are going to ignore, but they really have questions. So if you are starting to engage a conversation with people that are not going to book correctly uh, right now, I, I mean, you're going to be able to get a lot more people booked in. And that's really important. Also, one thing that I didn't put in here, make sure that on each text that you're sending, you have a link to your booking calendar because if not, they're going to be having to go back and at the top of the text and look like, oh, where's the link so I can book a call? Oh, I can't find it. Bad thing. <laughs> not not going to book one. So make sure that each time you remember, you actually either, if you have a booking link, send them a booking link in the text or if you don't have this installed, maybe send them, hey, would you want to come at X or Y time? But a booking link is a bit simpler. It's more systemizable. Now, also remember a big thing, you are not bothering them. They signed up because they have a problem in mind. You are not bothering them if you are calling them, texting them, sending them emails. You are not bothering them. That's a big thing I see people are thinking is that they think they're bothering them. If you were bothering them, well, two situations can occur. Number one, remember, as I told you, that they signed up for something because they have a problem. They're not coming to the gym because they like sweating and <laughs> suffering. They like, we, they are not like us. <laughs> we crazy, I get it. but. They are not. So remember this, if they signed up for this, they have a problem they want you to help solve, to help them solve. So make sure that you get this in mind because you are doing actually a disservice to them if they are not being served to solve this problem. And second of all, if, if you're really pissing them off, they will just tell you to stop contacting them and you just make a note of not contacting them. No big deal. But the thing is, you're going to lose way more people are actually not making the effort and not doing the volume required to actually get them on to book, a, uh, to book an appointment, then you're actually going to piss off people. I guarantee you that. Now, to automate this whole thing, I would advise you to use Go High Level. This is um, the software we use to actually automate all those things for our customers. So yeah, if you want to go and take a look at it, it will greatly help you to actually automate 95% of the process. Now, best practices part two. Actually, I'm gonna give you a follow-up schedule that we use for the first eight days. You can definitely use something like this. Note, this is extremely aggressive. I'm with you, but it gets results. So as you can see, we have on day one, two to three times, uh, texting them and two to three times double dying them. Like for example, you can do that in the morning, in the, in the middle of the day, in the, um, in the evening, because again, as you can see, we have this V approach, meaning that we start with a high volume, but we, as time goes on, go lower and lower because the goal is really to get them at when they are as hot as possible, when they are really in like, oh shit, I just signed up for this and I really need to get this handle. So that's when we actually want to get them at this point. Then also, we got to take something in consideration because some leads, that's just the name of the game, they are not going to schedule a time right now. Maybe they're not ready, maybe something came up, you never know, but sometimes it happens. So for this, you got to have your lower back, your foundation set up, and have a long-term nurture system set it up. Meaning those leads that are basically didn't schedule 30 days plus after they filled up the form. So it's great to have strategies like this because sometimes, as I told you, like, I don't know, life happens, leads don't book an appointment, but you still have the, they were still interested. So it's great to have them in a list and actually contact them and reach out to them again later so you can see if this is something they want to explore. And I'm going to share with you strategies, three strategies I think that I noted down that you can use in order to get those leads. And what's great with this is that you don't have to invest advertisement, like in advertising budget for those guys. You just have to send a few ways to contact them, which I'm going to show you. And when you do that, you're actually able to book opponents like this out of thin air, which is incredible. So best practices for this, I would advise you guys to have an email newsletter, send an email to one to three times per week. Now this don't have to be, this doesn't have to be a promotional thing always. I would say even do the 80-20 rule, do 80% value sharing like exercise tips, nutrition tips, for example, new posts of like blog articles you're doing. And 20% of the time actually going back to people and say, hey, I, I see that you didn't sign up for a, client, uh, a class. We have this offer right now. Want to try it? You know, that's a great thing that you can actually do. 
Also, text every 30 days. You can definitely automate this with Go High Level, the automation software, or any automation software you may be able to use. But yeah, text and maybe call every 30 days. Hey, I saw that you signed up a few months ago for our offer at the time. Uh, is this still something that you want to handle? Or not? And simple, like simple text like this, and you're definitely going to get some response. And also do some reactivation campaigns. So basically what a reactivation campaign is, we also call this a database reactivation. We go through a whole list and we send them a text, uh, a text or two actually, to make sure we book them on an appointment. Say, hey, we have this incredible offer that we're just running for Black Friday. I want to make sure you guys take a part of it. Just respond yes if you're interested and I'm gonna add you onto the list so we can book uh, a time to book you guys. So that's a great thing that you guys can do to actually reactivate some prospect that, well, weren't ready before, but maybe if you put in a, a different offer in front of them, they are going to actually take a look at it, which is great. So now we're gonna go into the short process. Extremely important because you can book as many appointments as you want, but if none of them show up, well, kind of annoying. So we're gonna make sure that those guys that actually set an appointment actually shows up and I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process that we use to actually get anywhere between 60% to 80% of leads actually show up which is incredible more like the, the average of the industry is 15 to 30 percent so it's definitely a great ratio we have so the tools we are using they are the same as lead nurturing meaning emails text and calling the thing is we're going to use them a bit differently because it's a different job here that we're using them for. We also have another tool that is selfie videos and it's a great one. I'm going to show you exactly how you guys can use it to get a ton of appointments that are actually going to come up and buy your memberships. So best practices for this, I would advise you guys to have text reminders. Those are automatic most of the times, but yeah, you can do one 24 hours before, six hours before, one hour before the appointments. That's easily automatable. Uh, so. Yeah, that's pretty much it. After this, I would also advise you if you have the occasion to call them the day before or maybe end the day of the appointment just to make sure they're coming in. Hey, like just want to make sure if you can still make it to our appointment at X time. And that's it, like simple one-liner, one but when they actually have an appointment on the phone, it's uh, a new human on the phone, sorry, it's way harder for them to actually not show up because not showing up to a text reminder that's made by a robot, they don't give a, they don't give a damn, but when you actually have somebody that actually, hey, like, said you, were, you, were, you said you were coming in, well, you didn't, it's really, <laughs> it's really annoying. So they're like, gonna be like, oh, way more likely to show up because they actually talk to a human. And same thing that's extremely fast to do, but I would 100% advise you guys to do, is to do a selfie video sent at each appointment book. So if you have a front desk person that does this, or maybe yourself, what you can do is just say quick selfie video, personalize this time, it's way better. Hey, Claire, this is Gabriel, just wanted to show you around, this is the gym, and yeah, I'm pumped to get you, um, to get you on the appointment we're gonna have at X time tomorrow. Don't forget, you just basically have to take gym closes and that's pretty much it. Yeah, have a good one, I'm pumped to see you tomorrow. Something simple like this, of course, like uh, <laughs> it wasn't prepared, so it wasn't perfect, but you get the idea. Just stating, hey, for example, also remind, reminding them, reminding them of like the address or something like this, so they can actually be sure. Oh, it's at this place. You gotta turn right after this place. If you have a particular location that's a bit hard to find, maybe you can include that in the video or in the call previously in the text as well. But yeah, that's basically the tools that you can use to actually make those guys show up, and it's extremely effective. So also, my friends, really important. As you saw, we talked about the low, the upper parts of the body, but we gotta make sure we don't skip leg day, really important. Next, we also have to make sure that we talk about how to build a bulletproof sales systems because you can get as many people in as possible. If you're not closing them, it doesn't matter. So the goal is really to make sure that the whole body, again, is complete and you can generate more revenue with your marketing endeavors. Like, yeah, don't, don't be like this guy, basically. <laughs> so I'm gonna cover that in another video because this one is running pretty long already, but I'm gonna cover that in, a, in another video exactly what the sales process you guys should be using to maximize the return you're gonna have in your investment. By the way, if you are a gym owner and you really want to fix that acquisition, that client acquisition problem and systematize that, there is a link in the description. You can click it or not, I don't mind. If not, keep enjoying the value. Actually, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would like, highly recommend you guys to subscribe and to like this video because when you do so, YouTube is gonna recommend you better videos that are gonna actually help you to grow your business. So yeah, make sure you like this video and I really appreciate your time because I know it's precious and I deeply appreciate your time and the fact that you watch this video. Thanks a lot and I see you on the next one.